So as long as there's a SharePoint group in here, um, I'll just call it director group. As long as there's a SharePoint group on my site called director group with that exact name, it will recognize it and it will send an email to whoever's in that group. So I definitely recommend using groups when you can in here so that you're not hard coding any individual's name inside of your form. All right, so I set the value of the next approval approver name to director group. And then when the director's done, that's the end. So when they submit it, it, it uh, sets the current approver as final. And so then it's done. So we don't need to send it to anybody else. And then let's see, let me go ahead and publish this and we'll run through it and see how it goes. Actually, before I publish it, I want to put a couple of these fields and have them in here so, and have them as visuals so we can see what it's filling in as we go. Let's see. So let me go ahead and go back to, oh, come on, finish publishing. Go back to my other view. And I'm going to put manager name in here and see um, just down here in this white box so I can see that it gets filled in. All right. Now I'm publishing one more time. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna open up Outlook and go in and look at all these emails because um, that's just that might just I think they'll just take too much time. But okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill out a new form. And I can see that since that remember the form load rule that went and looked at my user profile and it set the manager name, look, see my manager's name is Shane. And so it already filled in that value. So at least I can see visually, you know, as I'm testing the form that that value got filled in. So I'll just make up some stuff. Hopefully that email didn't like actually go to Shane. It probably did. <laughs> so Shane probably just got some random email from me. Um, and so now, see, you can see that it filled in that next approver name being Shane. Now I have to go remember to create that SharePoint group though, because when it gets to that third step, it's going to be looking for that group to send the email to. So I'll uh, do a new group. Director group. And so whoever you put whoever you put in this group will get that email when it gets to that point. All right. So let's see. I'll go ahead and go back to this library. Okay, so now it's going to show me this approval section. And I'm gonna go ahead, you know what, I'm just gonna put um just make something up. I think we have just like a test account in here that I can put in here. Yeah, that's Shane's dog's name. <laughs> so he's gonna, Shane's dog is going to be the next approver. They'll sure are quiet. Shamise, did you just mute everybody? Okay. I'm here. I just muted myself, but everyone else is, is free to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the next approver, you can see that it filled in. That next prover is being Tyson, and it would send an email to to him next because the workflow just looks at whatever that value is. So now I'm going to send. I don't even have Outlook open, so I'm not going to worry about getting. All right, and then the next one is going to go to director group. So you can see, as long as the SharePoint group name exactly matches that, then it will go to that whole group. And then when the director group, whoever that is, opens it up and approves it, then it's going to be final. Now I didn't, you'll notice that I did not set a value for it to change or clear out that next approver name, so it still says director group. But since the current approver is final, the workflow would have would have reached this condition and it set it would have said final and would have sent it to whoever created the form. So 
as a recap, if, if the current approver is not final or rejected, that basically leaves out, you know, all, all those different names like manager, director, and things like that. It's, if it's any of those things, it's going to send an email to whatever that next approver name is. Otherwise, if it's the very last stage of the workflow, it sends an email, email to who, cre who created it, telling them it's been approved at all levels. And then it's going to, otherwise if they reject it, it's going to send an email to whoever created it. So let me see if I can go look at the workflow here. No, I didn't even, I didn't even attach the workflow to the library, so the workflow didn't even do anything. Okay, so since I've created a reusable workflow, to be able to use that reusable workflow, basically in any form library, I can, I can go attach it and use it. Now I have attached it to this uh, library, but see I would need to go ahead and check these boxes. And I unchecked the boxes just uh, before this demo so that it would run without it at first. So I checked the boxes to make sure that it runs every single time an item is created or changed. Now I've also accounted for the fact that once the workflow is final, it's not going to be changed anymore because once they open that work that form up, when it's final, it's going to be set in read only. So it's, it's not possible for anything to happen after that point. So here's see the other, the other uh, view I didn't show you yet is the read only view. And basically in the properties of the view, it just says read only. So another, this is another form load rule. So if it's final, if current approver equals final, switch to the view read only. And then this is how I got it to go to the approvals view. Basically, if the current approver is not blank, then switch to the approvals view. So basically, when something's new, there's not going to be anything in the current approver field yet. It's going to be blank. So if it's not blank, then it switches to the approvals view. All right, so one last thing that I didn't put together is the email. So I'll show you how you can put together the, the email link to be able to directly open that form. It's actually a little bit tricky, but uh, if you want it to open the form as a uh, as a browser-based form instead of using the client, and a lot of times I like to I like to go in here with the in the library settings and set unless I have to use a client-based form for some specific reason, I like to go in here and just set it to hard-coded to open in the browser no matter what. But even if you set the form to open in the browser here in the library settings, you still need to be able to make sure that the hyperlink you give them in the email is also going to open it in the browser. So the hyperlink just has to be formatted in a certain way. So how do I get that? How do I know what that hyperlink is supposed to look like? So if I hover over it, it looks like this. It's basically got a path that goes to the library and then to that XML file. But once I click on it, you can see that I've got a whole bunch of stuff up here. So I have to take this, I'm going to take this hyperlink here and uh, dissect it and say what, you know, what is, how is this formulated? What is, what is all this stuff? So this part at the beginning lets it know that it's basically um, using form services. It's a browser-based form. The XML location is that actual XML file that we're using. And then the source is where do you want to take the user to after they hit submit or close that form. So this is where it redirects them to. So this is also very powerful. And I usually like to set the source to be something like the home page of the form site or something like that. So usually you don't want them to end up back at the form library. So right here, by default, it will just take them back to that all items view of the form library. In a lot of cases, you don't ever need them to see that. You just want them submitting the form and being done with it. So, and then this default open equals one, default item open equals one, that's part of also the, the browser-based, makes it open as a browser-based form. So I'm going to take this whole hyperlink and copy it and go back to here. Now, what I can do in my workflow is set this variable of whatever the hyperlink is just once and then use that same variable in all those different emails in my workflow so I don't have to just keep redoing this. So I'm going to go set a workflow variable. 
I'm going to call it um, form link string. And this is what I'm going to use. I also want to go ahead and just use um, and make it a hyperlink so that, I, so that I have, you know, like the ahref and make it an actual link so that we can just use that same code in all the forms. So first of all, I have my site here. So now, now keep, keep in mind that everything that I'm doing here, I have to remember that I have to make it generic because um, it needs to be able to be used on all my forms. So I can't put the hard-coded link to that one library in here since this, this workflow is going to be used for all of my libraries. So this great thing that we have now in SharePoint Designer 2010 is this um, workflow context data source. So I'm going to take that current site URL and put that here. So it'll take whatever the current site is and use this link here. For the XML location, I can select that. And I can also use my workflow context. And I'm going to use my current item URL. Okay. And for my source, I just want them to go back to the home page. So this is also going to be the current site URL. So there we go. There's our hyperlink. Now I need to actually put the hyperlink part. So here's some formulating the hyperlink. And then uh, let's see, as the title here, I can put, I guess, just the name, whatever the name is of that um, form. There, so now my hyperlink to my form has been formulated, and I can stick that, that variable in all of my emails and not have to do it multiple times. So this form is ready for your approval. I go take that variable, just put it in there. I'm almost done, so I think we'll have just a couple minutes for questions. So, and then put it in this last email. So anybody, when they get the email, they'll be able to go open that form up. All right. So, and then I would publish it. So that's pretty much the gist of how that whole just generic approval section concept can be used for multiple forms in your organization with one simple reusable workflow and a couple of simple site columns to be able to use to crop, be used across the board. So that's it. Thank you for listening to a highlighted segment of SharePoint Shop Talk. Join us live and ask your own questions every Thursday, 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. You may also join our group on LinkedIn at SharePoint Shop Talk. That's our group name. And we hope that you can join us. We look forward to the continued sharing of SharePoint knowledge.